so yeah, basically, uh, there's uh, there's even a cameo. Oh, of, I forgot to hide and be the Easter egg. There's a cameo in that game uh, by a guy that looks uh, exactly like Iwata. Ah, yeah. I'm hiding. He doesn't do the direct to you though. Oh. Hi, uh, Hi, you may remember Netbug. Netbug zero zero nine. Follow me on YouTube. Yeah, go for it. Her channel is pretty good, especially if you like uh, hyper. Ro Say the whole time. No, no, no. Keep trying to say it. This is great. Hyper robot monkey team. Uh... <laughs> it's super robot monkey team hyper force go. That's, That's it. going on my channel. Okay. <laughs> I have an idea for a new video series. Make random strangers try and pronounce the name of that show. <laughs> try to remember the name of the show. I mean, none of the words are hard to pronounce. It's just, there's so many of them. There's just so many. Anyway, you may, may remember Netbug from last year when she joined me for Lucario vs. Redamon and Balrog vs. TJ Combo. Now, we've tried to record this intro already, but my computer crashed as predictable. It hasn't done that in a few episodes, but, you know, I'm getting really sick of this. What exactly is page fault in unpaged area? How do I fix it? And why do the instructions online never help? Go on Reddit, man. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, we did not actually start the video, so we haven't been able to uh, view anything. As you could tell by our conversation, she's borrowing Breath of the Wild. Uh, I borrowed Mario Odyssey, I... and the controls are so floaty. Why can't I just rush to Ganon's base? Because you'll get killed. You'll be I hate those stupid guardians. You'll They're be transported the back to the safe point between two slices of bread, the as Yahtzee Kershaw said. The guardians are the worst. You did that in the camera flicker. The guardians are the worst. They are. They are the literal worst. I hate them. Fortunately, later you get an arrow that can kill them in one hit. If you hit their eye. You have to hit their eye in order to kill them in one hit. That's tiny. Breath of the Wild, 0 out of 10, do not recommend. Don't play Kirby Star Allies instead. Okay, so anyway, um, I don't have any experience with either of these characters, do you? I've watched a little Samurai Jack, and I know Afro Samurai is an anime. <laughs> with Samuel L. Jackson. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh... And I know neither of them could beat All Might. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, let's try this in the middle again. Uh, what? No, I don't want to view the stats for webcam. You gotta really left click, man. You keep like clicking in the middle. I am not left clicking. Or I'm not you're right, totally, right you're, clicking. You're really I, close though. You're clicking like right there. Yeah, well, it shouldn't matter. If I'm clicking on one side, it should register as that side, no matter how... Clo unless I'm getting right in the middle. You are right in the middle sometimes, but though. I'm like there. That's not no, right. No, you were right in the middle before. Uh, anyway, let's get started. You know, I probably should have started by singing Reptiles and Samurai, but, uh, what the heck? No time like the present, huh? Reptiles and Samurai! Do you guys see what I put up with every year? You invited me to your house last year. And then you had to put up with my crap for a week. Yeah. It, see, you, you, brought it, you brought it on yourself. I'm just saying. All right. Among the soldiers of history, the samurai is one of the most prestigious and dangerous. So let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Okay. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. And Afro Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. You and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. I love the... Yeah, it's fully... Like, Long ago, in a distant land, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, you know unleashed in so, unspeakable evil. So, yeah. But a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. I, I mean, him. 
And that nameless samurai became known as... Jack. Jack. Jack was out. Jack, Jack. Yo, Jack. Jack was Jack. Jack, Jack. Doesn't really strike fear into your enemies. Young Jack was the son of a Japanese emperor who had imprisoned Aku years before. However, good. upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look how Where's small he is! Yeah. Well, uh, to prep for beating the snot He's out of Aku, Little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Most notably, he learned horseback riding from a sheik, staff fighting in Africa, wrestling from gladiators, axe throwing from a Russian boyar, mounted combat from the Mongols, martial arts That's from Shaolin not... monks, and... and archery from Jumping freaking good. Robin Hood! You know, everyone's favorite talking Look, fuck. Wrong Robin Hood. Shall That's we? your opinion. Jack's progress was exceptional. You need At just eight years old, he defended oh, oh, a whole shell. village from a band okay. of marauders. All before he could even legally drink the good stuff. 17 years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, no, no. His katana. Katana, pajama, tomato, alfredo. It's all the same. But before Jack could put his training to good use, Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. Awesome. What a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. I thought you graduated from the School of Evil Science or something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chosen a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, even though He's he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck to his mission to get back to the past and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Thus, a special blade was forged by gods from Norse, Egyptian, and Hindu pantheons. This Anna. mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. Okay. And boy, is Jack's katana Sometimes an extremely effective weapon. No it can absorb and redirect energy, okay. including fire, vaporize beings of evil, and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine Super Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be Not stronger than steel. Name. Of course yeah. it is. So the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Jack. He's strong right? enough to push over this giant pillar, tough enough to survive a fall from orbit, and fast enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. Nice. By timing the drop, all this had to have taken place in about one third of a second. He's nice. like a ninja samurai. Ninja Marai. Actually, he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. For this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. Nice! Damn that fast! What can he do? Next thing you'll tell me, he has the power to fly or something. Well, Jack can't fly, but he did learn how to... Jump curb! Okay! Uh, yes, that. By strapping line. a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height we can determine to weigh 39 tons, Jack learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. Crouching tiger hidden samurai! These trees are pretty big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Tibs on Jack for my basketball team. Guy's got hops. We haven't even mentioned yeah. the time he survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. Hmm. Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, <laughs> it was only a matter of time until Jack found his way chicken. home and defeated Aku. Well, that was a wild well, it ride. took a lot longer than it probably okay, should have. That's it. 50 years, in fact. But yeah, where are you going? Time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a boy scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty gullible when it comes to more devious his opponents. Inner also, self, he continues to Jack, prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the business others My smile is his too bright and Still, running the forces of evil hey, should watch out that. for Samurai Jack. Go back and this probably should have. 50 years, in fact. Okay. In rainforest, where the average tree is about okay. 130 feet tall. Tibs on Jack from my basketball team. Guy's got hops. 
We haven't even mentioned the time he survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. Hmm. Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, it was only a matter of time until Jack found his way home yeah, and defeated okay. Austin. That's what I was trying to do. But it took a lot longer than it probably should have. Fifty years, in fact. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty gullible when it comes to more devious opponents. Hmm. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, yeah, the good. forces of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack. <laughs> The so stories what? that surround the two Some sacred headbands are as Disney. many as the men who died in their pursuit. What's so special okay. about some strips of head cloth? Legend says they were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural power. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Just a minute. Let me move the camera over a little bit. Did you want to see the abs? At best, the number one headband may grant agelessness, but this is debatable. The myth of its powers and rules of obtaining it are often disproven and broken. It is likely nothing more than an overhyped strip of cloth. Interesting. What about the number two headband? Move that there. Well, here, they haven't put much over this way. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. <laughs> I'd like to see someone oh, wait, cosplay Did his parents really dance. call him Avro? Talk about setting big expectations. Well, no, it's a nickname, but even if they did, have and you did. seen his dad? I think they knew what to expect. Damn, is a good just joint. look at it. <laughs> oh, and hey, look, he's got the number one headband. That explains a lot Here's how this show. works. The person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. And the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? So where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with me. Actually, the opposite would probably happen which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in front of him. Why does this always happen? You know, I always thought parenting was the hardest thing about being a dad, but at this point, I think it's just actually staying alive if your kid's ever gonna do anything great or just sticking around for them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named Swordmaster. Who the hell is naming these people? Through Swordmaster's training of sword mastery, Afro learned the traditional samurai fighting styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. Oh, right. Yeah. Swordmaster's goal was to refine Afro's body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or bushido. But that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. He kind of does. And now he can take down the guy who killed his dad. Alongside his new friend, slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the f*** on! Where'd this guy come from? Now, don't we look like shit? How you been, man? Well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband. Okay. But all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. He got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got no chance, dude! Though it's also possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, <laughs> brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun who also talks to me. He tells me to do stuff. Okay. <laughs> anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no master. And so, with his swordsmanship perfected, 
Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Including his father's sword. This super long blade Cigarettes. has lasted through decades of battle without much issue. Perfect for kicking some ass. He also has a steel comb, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But Add. Well, at least it gave us a warning. Add in three, two, one. Yeah. While on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. Nice. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheet through another guy's throat, and even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Afro is fast it's enough to cut off. bullets out of thin air, and even it's a laser arm. beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. This means Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light, more than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Afro. Talk about metal. This Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart. He survived getting hit by rockets, including this RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face. A RPG in a backpack? <laughs> <laughs> I think I smell math coming. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 is feet. It? With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion and compared the resulting surface it's area to the distance. sheer force for granite. With this, we deduce the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Damn, what kind of mega rocket launcher are these guys packing? And where do I get it? Many stood in his way, and Afro didn't get through um, them all unscathed. But by the end, he cut down justice, okay. took his revenge in hand, and okay, proved to the world good. that Afro- Yeah, hang on. Oh, okay, there yeah. we go, right when I click pause. Um, so the durability of the rocket, how would that, uh... Samurai yeah, is number one. Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. That sounds pretty personal. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, looking at these swords makes me want to sharpen blah, my knives for my blah, blue apron blah, meal blah. tonight. Look, they gotta make their money. I know. Okay. Being a YouTuber is hard and we don't get enough money. Click my sponsorship video. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have any. <laughs> so, um... Afro seems faster. Jack seems more durable. Yeah, but Jack also has his honor code and I feel like yes, definitely. he could easily be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Afro's got the advantage here. He also, um, he has that inner Jack, the thing that's, you know, always telling him to do bad shit, and Afro has Ninja Ninja. <laughs> oh, jeez. So they both have, like, a dark force with them. Yeah, but I I'm still, I'm kind of leaning towards Afro. Hmm. It is your arm that's causing it to flicker. Well, see there, I put my head back, exposing more skin. I am not that pale! You are t we are both look, pale. Look at that, see? I got all kinds of tan. I mean, I got kind of a farmer tan, I, I guess. The the Here, it's yours. Well, bo both. Here it's right. both of ours. <laughs> okay. Hi, Athena. Yeah, I think you're dark enough that you could be on camera right now. But then again, you have that pale beak. Okay, and I have to have my arm free so I can do the recording. Uh, Too bad. Just just live with it. I'm leaning more towards Afro as well, but it's more like 55-45 for me. The camera totally froze up. Of course it did. Of course oh, well. it did. I just hope that's not a precursor to the... Uh... Here, let me remove the camera for a second. Devices, video, integrated webcam. 
Okay, um, I don't know what's, there we go. Okay. Let's How's... see who wins. Yeah, well, either way, we lose because of this stupid camera. Okay. And again, if the camera goes out, I don't know what to do. It's never done this before. Well, it did it once when we were filming the first intro. Or actually, no, yeah. when we were doing test videos, but. I don't think glaring at the flicker is going to cause it to stop. Can't hurt. But it makes me feel better. Okay. Pretty. <laughs> what? Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. Fire! Okay, since they're hardened killers, they're just gonna attack each other. That's on a rope. Right? That means. Means a lot of innocent. Not the hat. Means a lot of innocent peasants are gonna have to fight a long way around. Camera, camera, camera. Okay, I'm gonna remove camera. Bring it back. I always mess up sources and outputs. Okay, video. Frickin' all over the place, come on. Okay, well, we were both wrong, but like I said, it was like 55-45. Yeah, it was pretty close, Steven. Uh -huh. I, I was really thinking like, that. Is he gonna get his arm back, or...? Afro was an exceptional warrior, and his skills would what absolutely dominate training. most sword fights. However, Jack has had a lot of experience with opponents... Hang on. Well, I guess he trained for, what, 50 years, it said? A, he trained yeah. for, like, a lot. Yeah, so I guess we forgot to take that into account. I don't I mean, think he trained for 50 years. I think he trained for, like... 12 or something, and then by the time he was 25, he was like... Well, yeah, but they said something about time travel made him more, or, um, unaging or something. I don't know. Hey. Fight dirty. I, I think that's and Afro could not season. stand up to his physical superiority. Yeah, Afro never showed strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. 
Jack could react as fast as 70% the speed of light. Afro did block that light speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only needed to react around 21% the speed of light to do this. All right. Still putting him at impressive relativistic speeds, but not even half as quick as Jack. Also, while Afro survived that mega-sized RPG explosion, don't forget how Jack survived a fall from orbit. While well, it does seem the spacesuit was responsible for Jack surviving re-entry, it certainly can't be held solely accountable for the final impact. Starting his descent from the Carmen line, or the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, I Jack covered a distance of 62 miles in just under Maybe 7 seconds, it, yeah. moving well over terminal velocity. Thanks to being propelled by exploding space speed! Which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Nice. Adding the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of nice. force. Nice! Way more than anything Afro survived. And then he just got up and walked away. Badass. In the end, Jack was just too fast, too strong, too Twink. tough, and too well trained for Afro 2. <clears throat> See, the winner is Samurai Jack. Nice. Okay, who do you want for next Thanks time? Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive All commentary my... on the episode, just click that little box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this even... episode, you can get it by clicking the link in the description. Okay, let's see here. Oh, Elfin Lead. Elfin. Oh, that is supposed to be a gory series. What the heck? Again. You broke it. Oh, my goodness, golly. Uh, this is this is ridiculous. You know, I... Uh, again, well, it's I, pretty much over anyway. I know, but we want to talk about it? I don't really have anything else to say on it, except, yeah, we were wrong yeah you know and i need to watch more samurai jack yeah i actually want to watch both of those series now <laughs> i'm not so sure about afro samurai i don't know ninja ninja sounds hilarious <laughs> shit man they got grenades and shit <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh dash exd um don't know if you've heard of him he he does gameplays and stuff um but it kind of reminds me of his Mortal Kombat videos. Yeah. Uh, he did the one where Baraka was his roommate. <laughs> you were going to do like that, Dashie! The video <laughs> is flickering again, and that kind of does it for this thing. Yeah. Maybe hide. I should hang this up in the background. I'm hiding. Round. I'm just going to hide. Okay, fine. You look like Gogo -Go from Final Fantasy VI. All you can see of Gogo -Go are its eyes. Is it a man? Woman, or should we ask? I think Gogo -Go is some sort of spirit entity. Figure guns. All right. So um, that was cool. Um, I look forward to next time. Uh, either way, there will be carnage. Ah, jazz hands. <laughs> I don't know how you managed to do that and stay in frame. And she has Breath of the Wild to get back to. And we're also going to go to Wajimaya today. So that's Woo! going to be fun. It's a Japanese grocery store. Let's go. gift store. And they have a bookstore inside called Kinyokuniya. And yes, we're going to look up the times of the buses. And... I'm going to go cry at all the manga I can't afford. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mm. But yeah, it definitely looked like Jack just bisected Afro right up the middle. <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, that's enough for now. I See you later. A ghost You're a purple ghost. Of you gotta, YouTubers you gotta, past. You gotta turn it inside out. For, you gotta have the white part showing no, no, to be I'm a ghost. No, I'm purple. I'm a purple ghost. I can do what I want, Blackjack. We're allowed to have fashion sense. I'm a very stylish ghost. Good night, everybody.